Welcome, it's Sinom. You're watching This Week in Crypto, a show where we talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins. We talk about the biggest news that happened last week, as well as I will give some predictions for the weeks ahead. So the first thing I want to talk about is, of course, that Bitcoin is down by 16 points, uh, almost 70 percent in the last 24 hours. So almost all the gains made in the last seven days are now gone. And this is the same story for almost all the altcoins as well. So almost everything is down right now. And uh, is this time to buy the dip or is this time to panic? I will talk about in this video. We will talk, we will talk about uh, if it's time to actually, uh, I mean, we're going to talk about the macroeconomic view because the Warren Buffett indicator just flashed a, a sell signal, which does not do, do that very often. So we're going to take a look at that one. We're going to cover the Tether FUD that is going to release on 15th of January this week. So we're, we're, we will talk about that one as well as at the end of the video, I will talk about altcoins as well. So without further ado, let's just talk about the price of Bitcoin right now. So the first thing that is quite interesting to me here is that with Bitcoin, we had this bullish bullish uh, formation here and then we just had a massive dump and then Bitcoin recovered and made an all time high here. And then we had another foolish, uh, bullish formation, which got invalidated. And then we had this massive dump again. So this is just seems like Bitcoin is punishing short term traders. And that's quite interesting. And the money is actually going for people who have the long term view. So money is this is a wealth transfer from the short term traders to the long term holders. And uh, that's basically what's happening there. And that's pretty much the only thing that's true there. The trend line here, it is still not broken. So the trend line looks still good. Uh, if we take a look at the exchange outflow, so, so this is the Bitcoin on exchanges, the holders are still not panicking for, at this level. So as you can see, when whenever this is uh, below the mean, it means that Bitcoin is deposited to exchanges. And most of the time, if you deposit Bitcoin to exchanges, it means that people want to trade it. And when it's below the mean, it means that people are actually withdrawing their Bitcoin to their individual private wallets or institutional wallets uh, outside the exchanges. So whenever this is going down, it's taking the supply out of the exchanges when it is going up, supply is coming to exchanges as well. So for now, it doesn't look like a lot of people would be depositing Bitcoin in panic. So for now, I'm still not panicking myself. So this is a very critical uh, thing to look at, in my opinion, going forward. And if we take a look at the uh, the actual change, you can see that the Bitcoin on exchanges is just rounding down here and still not going uh, up. Even if we take the hourly view, it's not it's going up by by somewhat, but not by a lot yet. Of course, it, it bottomed here and then went up, but. I'm still not panicking myself and I don't think you should be panicking either. This is the reason why you want to hold uh, more Bitcoin, especially as Bitcoin price goes higher. You want to have stable coins ready so you can actually be buying these tips and then you can sell those at a profit later on whenever uh, Bitcoin makes another move to the upside as well. But uh, now let's talk about the bigger view because I have actually uh, basically copied this chart from another YouTuber. So I was watching YouTube trying to understand the macroeconomic view of the whole market, uh, housing market, the stock market, crypto markets and so forth. So I stumbled upon this video, which is made by Conqueror Trading and Investing. And he had this very, very long uh, trend lines here on Bitcoin, basically drawing from this top to this 2013-2014 uh, top here, and then just uh, basically aligning these uh, lines along these uh, uh, different uh, price action moves that we had here on the logarithmic chart. So I basically copied that chart here and this is how it looks like. So if this chart would play out, we would hit about $250,000 on this bull run. But as it goes with any model, no model is perfect. So I'm just expecting this model to be invalidated. But until that happens, I think we can at least learn something from this uh, for the behavior, how Bitcoin likes to behave in these kinds of scenarios. So first, as you can see here on 2013, 2014, Bitcoin had a really nice move to the upside, but then it went down about almost 80%, 75% downwards, and then continued the bull run here. So it's like a two big waves. But here on 2017, we only had a one big uh, wave to the upside here, 
with big dumps on the way upwards. So this line here or this uh, this time we could have a similar situation we had in 2017 where we had only one wave or we could have two waves here. And the big reason why I do believe that there may be a massive crash during this bull run for this particular uh, cycle is that the macroeconomic uh, situation is in my opinion too greedy. So the stocks have gone too high but the real value that the companies are providing on is not going up uh, as well. So that's basically the Buffett uh, Warren Buffett indicator. I will show that soon. But anyway with this indicator here we just topped the $40,000 mark here. So that's basically the resistance of this major trend line here. So for that reason I believe that 40,000 will be a major uh, tr <coughs> major line that it is hard to break. But when it is broken then we will have a really nice moves to the upside as well. So we could reach the $100,000 quite soon after 40,000 is actually being broken here. So this trend line is basically uh, pointing me to the $40,000 mark and this line here is actually almost to the T of the uh, last bull market cycle. So when that was broken we went quite quickly for the $40,000 mark. So for that reason I believe that could be the same here. And But I don't know exactly how that plays out. But anyway I think these lines make a lot of sense to me. So I will be looking at these uh, in, the, in the future as well. So anyway that's quite interesting. But in the short term this line here is still being supported as well as this is the long-term uh, trend line that I was talking about. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, this is the long-term trend line that I was talking about here. So this is still at about $20,000 if it comes all the way down here. But we also have this trend line here which is still being supported which starts basically from here and uh, that is about $27,000 uh, that it could drop down to and we're still uh, in a bull market, in a healthy bull market. And these kinds of drops, they are healthy in a bull market. You have to understand that one as well. So in my opinion, what I have done so far is that I had a limit order here at 35,300 and it got filled. So I bought Bitcoin, then Bitcoin actually bounced back to 38,000. And I thought, okay, great, we had the dump. Now let's continue upwards. But the move ha has actually continued downwards here. So this price action to me is not still signaling that we would bounce from here but we can see that there's definitely support on this trend line here because we already had two weeks and a uh, aggressive uh, bounce from there as well. But again if this breaks down then we would we could call, come all the way down here. So I have a buy order here about $28,000 as well as I have here uh, on $25,000. So that's, those are basically the places I will be buying more Bitcoin. But if uh, it continues downwards like it could then that's of course another thing that could happen that uh, you have to be prepared for as well. So I will not be using all my stable coins to buy back Bitcoin because I do want to lock in the profits from this bull run as well before we go do much too much down. So anyway, that's basically the big view for the Bitcoin in my opinion is that we could go come down here but when this $42,000 uh, level has been actually broken that's really good for Bitcoin going forward as well. So we will see how that goes actually. Now let's talk about the biggest news that happened. So let's talk about the bullish news first. So the first bullish news is that Joe Biden is now saying here that 10 days we move forward and rebuild together. And right after this tweet, he posted that he needs $2,000 stimulus checks. So you can basically be guaranteed that United States uh, people will get the $2,000 stimulus checks. So uh, a lot of support from people for Joe Biden when that ha actually happens. That's of course inflationary and good for Bitcoin. Another bullish news that I saw was KSI who has uh, 6.4 million followers on Twitter and 22 million followers or subscribers on YouTube. He is now promoting Ethereum here publicly. So that's quite interesting that more celebrities are jumping the crypto bandwagon as well. Next, COVID-19 vaccination records stored on VeChain. So this is quite good because now there's a real, wor real world utility for blockchain as well. So a hospital in Cyprus started using the VeChain blockchain. So this is just one hospital 
But again, if WeChain has been able to capture a client like this and it works and they store 100 doctors uh, and personnel had their first uh, dose of COVID-19 vaccine and that's been recorded on the blockchain. So if this works, I'm sure it will uh, develop into other places as well. The only issue or the biggest issue I have with WeChain, why I haven't invested in that, is that the project has uh, in, uh, strong backing or strong ties to the Chinese government. So that's why I, I don't really want to back WeChain myself, but I'm happy to see that there's more blockchain ad adoption in the world. So that's for WeChain right there. Next one, Morgan Stanley has now purchased more of... Uh, MicroStrategy stocks. So as you probably know, MicroStrategy has billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin in their balance sheets. And Morgan Stanley, which is a global investment bank, now owns 10.9% of MicroStrategy. So basically the banks wanted exposure to Bitcoin by buying other companies. So this is bullish and bearish at the same time, because uh, it's bullish that banks want in on the Bitcoin action, but it is bearish that now institutions, they have a way of getting exposure to Bitcoin without actually buying Bitcoin themselves. So it's good and it's bad because it's bad that the money is not entering Bitcoin directly, it is entering Bitcoin indirectly. So it doesn't affect the Bitcoin price when they do this. And as you can see here, they have increased their stake by 455%. So Morgan Stanley is actually quite bullish for uh, micro strategy and if you take a look at their st uh, stock the stock is uh, doing almost the same thing as bitcoin so in 2020 if you had purchased micro strategy stock you would already be up by uh, significantly more than bitcoin actually so this is outperforming bitcoin as well which is quite interesting as well uh, next one is one river they also bought bitcoin so this was from january 5th, uh, 5th. so basically what happened here is that the crypto quant uh, analyst uh, he found that there was a 35,000 bitcoin transfer out of coinbase and uh, that's what happened there they're talking about 55,000 but i think this is wrong because the transaction was 35,000 dollar 35,000 bitcoin left the exchange and they are now uh, speculating that it went to one reverse uh, balance sheet because they had 600 dollars 600 millions worth of bitcoin in their balance sheet before and they promised in 2021 that they will increase that to 1 billion dollars so for that reason people uh, speculate that one river actually bought that so that's bullish that the, uh, the institutions the big holders are still wanting to buy bitcoin even when bitcoin was thirty thousand dollars so that's quite interesting there so they want to capture the macro mega trends of technological advancements and currency debasement so that's basically the reasoning there so overall these bullish news are quite good but now let's talk about the bearish stuff so this is the buffett indicator which is you take the global market cap or the basically all the stocks and you divide it by the global GDP, basically showing how uh, how safe or how good the stocks are actually performing. So when you buy stocks, you want them to actually produce uh, global GDP as well. So for this one, whenever it's over 100%, that's not good. And in 2008, this was oversold here. And that's when B uh, Warren Buffett actually exited the market. And then we had this massive crash, as you probably remember from 2008. So this indicator is quite accurate in the past. We hit 100% uh, percent here last year before the massive liquidity crisis. And for now, it went above 100 again. But this post here, as you can see, this is posted on August 15th right now. This indicator is 121%, which is the same that it was in 2008. So for that reason, a lot of institutional investors, professional investors are actually exiting the markets. So macroeconomically speaking, this is, uh, in my opinion, super bearish because uh, smart money is now exiting the market because the Buffett indicator has been so accurate in the past and it has prevented a lot of people losing their uh, their their value in the in the market as well. So for this reason, I am actually taking out 
uh, are selling some of the altcoins back into stablecoins as well. So re re uh, increasing my stablecoin ratio even further. And as the prices go down, obviously uh, my stablecoin portfolio goes higher if the other stuff is going down as well. So I will not be selling as much. I will start buying back uh, into into Bitcoin and other assets if this move continues to go downwards. But honestly, in the short term, we're still again supported by this trend line. So I, I don't want to do any hasty moves, but if it continues downwards, uh, that's when I will be selling more of my stuff. But overall, as the things go forward, I do want to gradually increase my uh, stablecoin portfolio uh, going forward as well, just because I'm anticipating that this bubble will burst uh, at some point. Of course, the governments and... Uh, Nobody wants it to burst, so they will do anything they can to print more. But you just have to be mindful that you now have the red signal and this signal has been accurate in the past. So just keep that in mind going forward as well. Next, let's talk about some of the on-chain metrics. So this is quite interesting post here. You have the MVRZ score, which identifies whether Bitcoin price is overvalued or undervalued compared to its fair value. And fair value basically is just taking the network activity and the fees and basically calculating what the price of Bitcoin should be if it was fair value. So this indicator is now also going to the red zone as well. Let's go back. Uh, it's going to the red zone here as well, which could mean that we have a local top for now, as we had here in 2013 as well. So when this spike upwards, then we have a pullback as well. It's not exactly super red yet, but it is still going to the red zone here as well. Next one is spent output profit ratio. It is looking at whether Bitcoin holders are in profit or at a loss. And this is almost everyone is at profit. So be careful, people want to uh, take their profits out. And that's one of the reasons why we had this dump uh, for today as well. I already saw that a lot of buying uh, is happening here that is supporting this one as well as we took a look at this one not a lot of bitcoin is being deposited so not many people are uh, panicking at these moments uh, right now so i'm not doing that either uh, let's go back let's go back here so next one is liquid supply chains so this basically just looks at the exchanges bitcoin balances versus the balances on individual wallets and whenever this is going red, it just means that people are taking Bitcoin out of the exchanges and putting them into private wallets. So this is good for the price movement whenever this is red. So this is bullish, but this is bearish as well as the first one was bearish. And the last one here that they are looking at in this article is they're looking at LMACD, which is looking at moving averages as well as the overall long term trend. And they have a chart that they can make from this. And as you can see, this bearish trend here or this downward trend here, we're now touching this line as well as, as you can see, the divergence between these two moving averages. They are quite high as they were here as well, as they will, as well they were here, as well as they were here, as well as they were here. So this is also showing that it's time to actually sell Bitcoin. So Peter Brandt, he's actually giving advice here that this is not now the right time to buy Bitcoin. So keep that in mind that even though there's a lot of bullish stuff happening, I think this could be a local top. And that's why I did buy some Bitcoin here. And I do have buy orders even further down here. But we could go all the way down, even down to 60% if there's a massive liquidity crisis like we had in 2020 uh, uh, because of the coughing crisis. So keep that in mind that that could happen. So be prepared for all these scenari scenarios as well. Uh, next one, let's talk about uh, Tether FUD. So the Bitfinex and Tether FUD is quite interesting. Back in the days, Bitfinex uh, supposedly lost $850 million of user deposits, but then they somehow took a loan with Tether and they were able to back it up. And after that, uh, people have been speculating if Tether actually has the funds or not. So on 15th of January, uh, Tether, they actually have to report back to New York uh, Attorney's General Office and give them documents showing uh, whatever they want to know. So that's happening on January 15th. So some people are speculating that this could cause a price drop. And for that reason, 
the Paolo Arduino and Stuart Hoigner, they actually went to this podcast and uh, you, I, I will link this down below. It's free to watch if you want or free to listen to if you want to. Uh, it's 47 minutes. I watched the whole thing and I will summar summarize it right now. So what they are saying here, and th by the way, they had this because they wanted to clear the tether FUD. So it's biased, of course, whatever they say here, but I'm just going to cite some of the most important things that I heard from this talk here. So the idea of issuing tether to buy Bitcoin for ourselves doesn't make sense. They, that's basically the outline that they want to say, because it's no point of them to print tether to make Bitcoin because they are highly regulated. It would get them in jail and it would jeopardize their uh, their uh, how the business actually works. So it just doesn't make any sense for them to actually print tether just to pump Bitcoin. It doesn't make sense. Uh, that's what they are saying here. Tether, it has always been redeemable. So they never have had an issue with any customer that they were not able to redeem Tether back into USD. And uh, they constantly share information and KYC to law enforcement. So they are highly compliant. And um, he says here that he was misquoted from summer. So in the summertime, he said that uh, they have $22 billion in reserves, out of which 75% is backed by cash and ca cash equivalent reserves. So the misquote here is that people thought that Tether is only 75% backed, but the real quote uh, that they said here in this podcast is that they only have 75% in cash and cash equivalent reserves and 25% is in other stuff. But they don't want to disclose what the other stuff is. They disclose that some of it is in Bitcoin. So the host here was actually pushing them like, okay, if part of it is in Bitcoin, that means that if you can do that with your balance sheet, then you have an incentive to actually pump the price of Bitcoin. And they said that they cannot do that. Uh, so I don't know if, it, if, if that's true or not, but that's what they said. And the reason why they have Bitcoin is that they acquired it in 2015 and 16, and they have to have some Bitcoin because of the transaction fees that they have to uh, uh, pay. Uh, uh, whenever they deal with the clients. So that's there. Uh, but in the future, he said that they don't currently have an update uh, on the management portfolio that they have the, uh, for the other 25%, but they are working to explore ways to provide updates on that uh, part. But for now, they don't have it. But he promised that you have to look out for 2021 and they will try to explore opportunities to actually show it to people to create more trust. Uh, then the host also asked, can you is issue Tether to buy Bitcoin? How does it enter your basket? And they said they cannot. They acquired in it in 2015. What about an audit? Some people are complaining about an audit. Why don't they get a professional audit? So they said here that they cannot get an outside audit because the type of their business and the size of their business, they, there's no company that can do that kind of audit for them. So for that reason, what they have been doing is that they release statements from, from their banks as well as their lawyers and accountants of their balance sheets every now and then to basically give trust to the community as well. And what I, another thing they said that they don't believe in suing the critics, even though the critics sometimes say some bad stuff and could get sued. They said that they don't want to shoo, sue their critics. They rather have an open discussion about this and show the proof of them actually being legit. Another thing which it was quite interesting to me, he mentioned that they have produced 2.5 million pages of material for the uh, law enforcement and for the lawyers and so forth. 2.5 million pages sounds a little bit too excessive in my opinion. So it, it, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but for me 2.5 million sounds a little bit too excessive. So I don't know uh, what to say of that. But then the host asked exactly about the January 15th, what will happen? So the people here said that no lawsuit has ever been filed against Tether or Bitfinex. There's no criminal investigation currently. The only thing that is currently being investigated is that they want to have the information that Tether has already promised to give them on 15th. So that's what's happening. And from 15th, what will happen afterwards is that the business of Tether and Bitfinex will continue normally, but 
uh, they will just have given the information to the uh, New York uh, uh, office. I don't remember what it the law, law office or something like that. So the next steps is that after they give, have given the information, they will looking they are looking forward to continue the discussion with them and help them answer all the questions that they need answers to. So the only thing that now what is happening is that they are just providing information. So this is not a lawsuit at least for now. Also, Tether it is registered with FinCEN as a money service business. So they have to make reports, they have to have a compliance program, and they are subject to examination of uh, to the FinCEN as well. So Tether is regulated at this moment in time. So again, he raised the point that how can they raise $22 billion worth of capital and never have any problems and why still people think that they are illegit. That's what he raised there as well. And for now, they are not actually taking US customers. And the last thing that uh, the host actually asks, okay, what do you guys think is the biggest risk for Tether? And uh, the CTO, I think that, that's his title, he said that uh, if the private keys of Tether get compromised, it gives the hacker the ability to print more Tether. So because of Tether, uh, they are trusted. If the hacker has the ability to print Tether, they can make unlimited amounts of money in a very, very short time and basically dump the market before they can actually react to that. So for that reason, the number one goal for Tether is to keep the private keys safe but they themselves are not printing money out of thin air. Uh, that's basically the situation they said there. So I leave it up to you if you believe it or, or not. Uh, I highly suggest watching this as well. But those were some of the highlights from that uh, FUD over there. Uh, next, swap, or next up is actually SushiSwap. And now we're going to talk about some of the altcoin stuff. So SushiSwap, they just released their roadmap for 2021. And I thought it was quite interesting. I have highlighted some of the stuff here. So they will have a launch pad for projects as well. So we'll, they will have a vesting, kind of like uh, the trust swap uh, vesting stuff there as well. But here they have a cross-chain uh, automatic uh, market maker enabled by Thor chain or Rune. As well as they will have a Polkadot version of SushiSwap in Q Q2 on the testnet Kusama. So that's quite interesting that SushiSwap is going to go cross-chain. So that's, I think, quite bullish for the uh, price of Sushi as well. And if we take a look at this one, uh, this is these are a little bit outdated stuff already. But if you take a look at SushiSwap, uh, the total value locked in SushiSwap is almost $2 billion right now. And that's, uh, that's a lot of money, actually, $2 billion. Because if you compare that to Uniswap, Uniswap has less than $3 billion. So SushiSwap is only about 50% of the way to Uniswap. So even though in our minds we think that Uniswap is the clear winner here, SushiSwap is only 50% away from the total value locked compared to Uniswap. So that's, I, I think, quite interesting in my opinion. And if you take a look at the price here, you can take a look at the market cap of Sushi is only $567 million. Uh, and if you take a look at the inflation that is left for sushi there's not much inflation left for this coin but if you take a look at uni token for the uniswap the inflation you still have 400 percent inflation left as well as the market cap is 1.4 billion dollars already so if you just compare these two tokens together i think sushi swap is actually it sounds crazy but a much better buying opportunity than uni token in my opinion so I think that's quite interesting that the value, uh, total value locked, it's so close to each other, but the total market cap of Shushi is half of Uniswap. So in my opinion, if you're just like taking a look at two, these two protocols, SushiSwap right now with their roadmap is looking quite undervalued. So that's just the point I wanted to make there as well as, and this is the um, coin I wanted to talk about today is one inch token. So one inch token, as you can see, the market cap is only one hundred million dollars right now. Circulating supply, and this is the, this is the worst thing is this inflation is just massive for this coin. But luckily, it is coming slowly. So anyway, I don't like this one, but the current market cap is only one hundred million dollars. The price is one point zero four dollars. But if you take a look at the total value locked. The total value locked in one inch is 550 million dollars. 
which is one third of sushi swap. So if this is one third of sushi swap, but the market cap is one sixth of sushi swap, I think out of all these three protocols, Uniswap, sushi swap, and one inch, one inch token looks like the most undervalued right now. So this is the coin I wanted to talk to you about today. And in the short term, I think one inch uh, uh, token can do actually quite well. So that's the coin I wanted to point out in this video. And of course, the best place to buy it is on one inch exchange if you want to buy it. So just a coin that I wanted to talk to you about. But if you are getting this, just know right now because of the dump, the fees on Ethereum are completely insane. If you want to do a single trade, you do have to pay $100 basically for the trade. So you can buy this token on Binance as well. So there you go. Anyway, uh, I think, yeah, I think that's it for this video. I think I covered everything I wanted. Just as a recap, in the if you're just looking at Bitcoin, I think this is looking quite good. Uh, even though the price, it looks like it's actually going below here. Yeah, it's going below here. Okay, good. Excellent. We, we actually may have, see an even bigger dump. Okay, I need to reevaluate this one again after it has made its move. I do have the uh, limit orders here, 28,000 and 26,000 uh, ranges. I, I have to still uh, analyze this a little bit better, but for now, I do believe that the trend will still continue until I get another signal. So for now, I will end this video saying be careful, take profits whenever you see that you are on profit, utilize these dips to buy back and uh, just be in the long term as well. Because Bitcoin, as you know, it is the hedge against this crazy money printing and it's uh, also a hedge against central planning against this central, centralized, uh, centralized control, I should say. Also DeFi is against that. So anyway, all in all, I do believe in the long-term vision of Bitcoin, but in the short term, we could see a big, big dump from the macroeconomic perspective. So I don't want to give more speculation right now. I think that's it for this video. <laughs> I hope you liked it. Uh, consider subscribing and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.